Hi, my name is Phil. I'm with SEI Marine Products. Today I'm going to be showing you how to assemble and install an SE-116 stern drive. The SE-116 stern drive replaces the Mercruiser Generation 2 Alpha from 1991 to present. As you see here, we ship our complete SE-116 in two packages, the upper and the lower separate. With your complete SE-116 units, you will receive a packing slip with the information card and warranty card as well. You will want to record your serial numbers on that warranty card for future reference. When ordering the SE-116, you will also need the complete installation kit that comes with the bell housing gasket, O-rings, and hardware. You will also need the anode kit um, for your SE-116. As well as that, you will also need gear lube and a gear lube pump. So we went ahead and pulled the units out of the boxes, and the first thing you're going to want to do is record the serial numbers. On the lower unit, you will see the serial number here, and on the upper unit, you will see the serial number here. The next thing that you're going to notice is some, some tags on the units. The first one is going to be the no oil tag, which shows that we do ship our units dry, and the other will be the break-in procedure tag. Okay, we're going to want to do a couple of things before we put the two halves together. First thing we want to do is make sure that the shifter is pointing straight ahead and out of the way as the upper unit comes down. The next thing we want to do is make sure that the quad ring is in place and the units do come with the quad ring glued into place. We just want to verify to make sure it's in position. Okay, and then we want to go ahead and grease all the connecting points. First we will grease the dowel pins. You'll see one at the front and one at the back. Next we want to grease the drive shaft splines. and also the water tube coupler o-ring so we'll go ahead and grease that okay after we've greased everything we want to go ahead and install the water guide tube which is going to go right on top of the coupler and also the trim tab bolt, bolts we're going to go ahead and drop it right in this hole here the last thing that we want to do is just verify that the water tube is in the upper unit which will come installed we just want to make sure that the long side is facing downward as you see here. Okay, so when dropping the upper onto the lower unit, we want to make sure and line up the water tube into the guide tube. And we will drop it into place there. And what we'll have to do is turn the input shaft to line up the drive shaft splines like so. And at that point, we want to make sure that the dowel pins are lined up, which they are. So we'll go ahead and grab the mounting hardware to bolt the two halves together. We're going to install the washer onto the bolt and also grease the bolt threads. We're going to go ahead and drop it into place here. So we're going to tighten down all four bolts now and we want to go to 35 foot-pounds and you'll want to use a torque wrench if you can. So we're going to want to install the front mounting bolt. First thing we're going to do is grease it and install it in the front here. With a half inch socket, we will tighten that down to 35 foot-pounds. Next, we're going to install the rear mounting bolt. It's up underneath the ventilation plate, and you'll want to just make sure you have your lock washer on there and greased as well. Okay, and also we're going to be tightening it to 28 foot-pounds. Next, we're going to install the front anode on the upper unit and we're going to be using the two bolts and lock washers and we're just going to grease those before we install them. And we just have the two bolts here underneath the plate. Next we're going to install the propeller onto the prop shaft and the first thing we want to do is grease the splines. Next will be the thrust washer and we'll want to make sure that the tapered side goes inward. And after the thrust washer is on, the propeller is ready to slide on as well. We will put the spacer in and then the tab washer. After the tab washer will be the nut. Then we will tighten to 55 foot-pounds. And 
and after we reach our 55, we want to make sure and line up the tab washer into the groove. Right there. And there are six tabs. Three of them will line up in the grooves and we'll just want to push those down as a safety. The next step is going to be to install the O-rings onto the input shaft. As you can see, we have two small O-rings and one larger O-ring. The larger O-ring is going to go on first. So we'll go ahead and roll that into the first groove here. And by installing that first one, we will take the smaller ones and they will kind of roll over that first one or else they would just get stuck into the groove there. Same thing with the next one. We'll leave that in the first hole. After we get the O-rings into place, we want to grease the splines and we'll also want to grease the O-rings. Now we will fill the drive with gear lube. First thing we want to do is remove the plugs. And we want to make sure that we get that drain gasket on each plug when we pull it off. And then we'll do the same for the drain plug. Now on this one I can see that the gasket is stuck in there so I'm going to use a pick to get that out of there without damaging it. Now we will take our first quart of oil and our gear lube pump and we're ready to attach it to the drain hole. And at this point, we'll just start pumping. Now that the oil is coming out of the vent plug, we will take the vent plug with gasket and install that. Now we took just over one quart, so you will need two quarts of gear lube to fill the Gen 2 Alpha that we're working on here. So as we're pulling this pump out of here, you'll want to do it in somewhat of a quick motion. So I like to remove the pump and with my hand just start the threads before I grab the screwdriver. And you will get a little dribble out of there and that's okay. And our gear lube is complete. We're ready to move to the boat.